Hi, thank you so much for joining me. In this video, I want to look at a particular experimental application of Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures. Dalton's Law of Partial Pressure states that our total pressure is equal to the sum of all of my individual partial pressures. Now, uh, I call this Dalton's Law over water because this would be applied to a situation in which a gas is collected by displacement of water. So what happens is, and I'll, I'll make a, see if I can blow up the picture here, you would have a gas collection tube here and there would be water inside the gas collection tube. Okay, and the tube would be inverted. You would start with it completely full of water, completely full, and as the gas is collected, it's less dense, it's going to displace the water. So the gas ends up being collected over water. Okay, now, Whenever you have a closed system with water, you are going to have some natural evaporation of that water. You will have above a surface of water a partial pressure of water, okay? And it will reach a point where for every one that evaporates, another condenses, and you end up having a partial pressure of water. If you increase the temperature, you're going to increase the moles of water vapor that form, right? And so you will increase the vapor pressure of the water with temperature. So what you'll find are tables where the vapor pressure of water is compiled at varying temperatures. So typically, my vapor pressure of water is going to be given in the context of the question, or you may be asked to Google that stuff. Look it up on a table, all right? So whether the gas comes for, from a reaction or just the release of the gas somehow into the container, and there's a variety of scenarios. So what happens is, is the gas comes in, you'll displace the water, and once you do, you're going to raise and lower, let me redraw this, now you've collected your gas, and what you want to do is raise and lower the level of the water inside, so I've got my barometric pressure pushing down, and here I have my measured pressure of gas pushing down, and if those two levels are equal, then my barometric pressure is equal to my measured pressure of my gas that I have collected. And in this case, my measured pressure is going to equal the partial pressure of the water, you're going to have a partial pressure of water up here, plus the partial pressure of my desired gas. Okay, so if I were to rearrange that, my measured or total pressure, I'm starting to use measured in hopes it'll help my students, I'm going to rearrange that. I typically am going to want my pressure of my gas. That's what I care about, the gas that is formed in a reaction or um, for some other reason. That's going to be what I'm going to plug into a separate gas law. So when you collect over water, make sure to take away the water before you continue on in your mathematics. Okay, so that's collecting over water. Let's see a mathematical example of this. So we're going to list our givens. <coughs> Excuse me, I have a volume equal to 50.0 milliliters. It's collected over water 
and has a measured pressure. So that's my initial volume. My measured pressure is 850 torr at a temperature. You can take the temperature of the water or the atmosphere because the gas will reach thermal equilibrium. So my temperature is 27 degrees Celsius. Then the question goes on to say, what's my new volume, because I'm going to change conditions, of my dry gas? So over water, take away water. If you want to dry something off, you take away the water. So I want to know my new pressure, standard pressure is 760 torr. I don't want to use one atmosphere because I've already got torr and I don't want to convert. So any standard pressure will do. Um, standard temperature, T2, is 273 Kelvin. Those are my givens. I want to check my units. Um, so milliliters is fine. Um, it doesn't say what unit, so I'm just going to calculate it in milliliters. Pressures are tor. Temperature has to be changed. So I've got 27 plus two, um, 273 is going to equal 300. Uh, it went to the ones place. If you want to make that 300.2, you can do that. Um, so that would be if I'd done 27.0 plus 273.15. So you, you have to do what your teacher says to do with that 0.15. A lot of teachers say just ignore it. Okay. Now, there are actually two equations here. Because we have a measured pressure over water, I have to apply my Dalton's Law. So it's going to be the pressure of the hydrogen that I collected plus the water vapor that I have at 27 degrees Celsius. And then... I'm going to do P1V1 over T1N1 is equal to P2V2 over T2N2. And in this case, my only controlled was the moles. Temperature changed, as did pressure and volume. So there are two names here. Let me get a better color. We have Dalton's Law. And we have the combined gas law. Okay, now this is not given in the question. It's expected that you can look it up in the table or it would be given um, within the context of the question. That happens to be 26.7 torr. I just looked it up on a table. For my students, that table is at the end of your notes packet. So, with all of that information, if you're an AP or IB student, they'll usually give that right within the context of the question. So before I use my gas, I have to take away the water. Right, I rearranged this equation to solve for the hydrogen gas. That's my P1, okay? And I get for that an 8, 20, 3.3 torr. So now I'm going to solve, substitute this into the combined gas law. You could have to substitute this into a Boyle's law, a Gay-Lussac's law, or an ideal gas law. Any of the other types of gas laws that you would learn in this unit um, become fair game for the application or combination of Dalton's law with that. So now I'm going to plug these in. So my P1 is 823.3, my V1 was 50, my T1 was 300.2. I need to know my, I've got my new pressure was 760 because it told me it was STP. I'm solving for my V2 and um, my T2 is 273. So if you do that math, you get 49.3, or I did, milliliters, and I went to three sig figs here. Okay.
So this temperature ended up at four sig figs, but it doesn't matter because the original pressure in volume limited me to three sig figs. So, oh, okay, that can be a little bit challenging, but if you'll remember the phrase, if you collect over water, take away your water. Do that before you do any other math. Take away your water. Okay, thanks for joining me. I hope this was helpful.